Hey guys, welcome to this second tutorial on primitives. This tutorial will encapsulate the basics of the extended primitives, which is under the same drop down menu as you'll find the standard primitives, as you can see there. Right, the extended primitives are very similar to the standard primitives, but as the word suggests, you can extend what you can do with them further. For instance, you can see that I have a shape which looks a lot like a box. Yeah, let's place it at 0, 0, 0, just so we can center it. And bring off of it. Okay, there he is. Now, as you can see, with this box, it's very similar to a normal box, but it's kind of rounded off. Now, the beauty of this tool is that you can actually change the amount of fillet, which is what we call it, to however you want. So instead of having to make a cube, then going into it and editing it via Editable Poly, which is more Te well, not so much tedious, but it's more time-consuming anyway. You can just adjust the fillet, and it automatically softens it for you here as well, which is a really great, you know, great way of doing it if you don't have much time. Um, you've got other things then, such as this prism tool. You can actually change these parameters here. So you can change what kind of a triangular shape you want. You can change the height of it. You can change the length of the certain sides as well. You can change the segments. So if you imagine that, like a uh, basically like your way of making a triangle <coughs> so if you wanted them all to be equal sided I don't really know the word for that at the moment but just give them all the same values and then you'll have a prism like that and they've all got equal sides you'll also find things like the L corners and the C corners here you can adjust these as well so you can make them as big as you want and as thick as you want and then we have a Jengon or I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not really sure you can change out the sides it's got and you can change the fillets which get applied to the sides so if you can imagine that like a box but filleted so you can actually make a cylindrical box if that makes any sense to you at all you may not necessarily ever need to use this tool but it's always helpful to know what it's there for anyway this is the hose it looks very much like a screw but it's not, I assure you it is a hose you can change the width of these here you can change the height of it all, you can change where they start and where they end you can change how many cycles it has, in this case the cycles are the amount that's there you can change the diameter of it and them in general and uh, so if you brought this down to say minus 1 it would be completely normal, but let's say minus 10 and even minus 30, you can see that it's a lot thinner in the middle, like a screw and uh, let's see what else we've got here this this is quite a pretty little light on this, the torus knot, it's probably had your eye right from the start. What this is, is it looks like a geometric impossibility, but if you look at it, it is possible, and it really is quite great. This is what many people use to calculate what we call caustex, or caustex. That's the way that light bends as it goes, travels through an object, such as glass or crystal. They're very useful tools for experimenting with shadows and lights, so keep that in mind because you may end up using that a lot. Very good for testing renders. You've got things then such as the oil tank, which you can also edit its parameters, the spindle, the capsule, and the hedra. And then there's this little curiosity here, which is a ring wave. Now you can change many of these parameters. There are so many here. You can change what segments it has radially. You can change its width, you can change the size it's got, you can change its height. So you can see you have something really cool like this going on. And there's just so much you can do with it. I mean, if you take the time to figure these out again, imagine how you could possibly blend them. Such as, we could make a simple screw just by placing this on top of there. So if you look at that, there you go, it looks very much like a screw. But, uh, just have a little play around with them. Also after you've had a look at the basic primitives and then standard primitives, sorry, I hope you've uh, understood more or less the gist of this tutorial. Um, next you'll go into how we can elaborate on what we've just learned and how we can apply these into everyday objects.